So in the car world, there are different stages of developments of cars. Uh, when you and I see something that we've never seen before, it's usually a concept car, and then it makes its way into pre-production, and then pre-production prototypes, and then a production vehicle. But then there's like this odd corner of the world where car companies, they need to test technologies, but they don't necessarily have a carrying case for it. That's what this is. It is a potpourri of technologies in a rolling test bed. Okay, so let's start with name, rank, and serial number. This EQXX, so technically I would call that a concept car that is forbearing the technology that will be coming in the EQ series of Mercedes-Benz, which we've covered in other episodes, electric cars. But this, it's not a China doll, kind of like inside baseball, concept cars or pre-production prototypes don't have serial numbers, which means they can't be registered. This car actually can have number plates on it because it has a serial number. So three important items we need to understand before moving forward. Number one, the EV is designed, engineered, and built in-house by Mercedes. To give you an idea, most EVs, with the exception of Tesla, they buy their EVs off the shelf from somewhere else. This was designed in-house with some of the help of the F1 team from Mercedes. Number two, 201 horsepower, wouldn't expect that to be like an AMG, this not a fast car. Number three, they didn't give us the exact battery capacity, but they did give us some guidance. It's just below 100 kilowatt hours. As a basis of comparison, an EQS, that's 117 kilowatt hours. A Hyundai Ioniq 5, that's 78 kilowatt hours. This, it looks big, but it's not. It's a 110 inch wheelbase. So this is closer to like a Civic in wheelbase than it is an S-Class. And that makes the battery a bit smaller. Now, in the case of the battery, that's something that's interesting where it impacts the mass. This entire vehicle weighs 3,858 pounds, or depending on you express your weights and measures, 1,750 kilograms. But the most important point we've got to focus on is how much of that weight is the battery? Well, according to some Mercedes engineers, they're telling me it's 1,091 pounds. The real question we've got to ask ourselves, how much is the battery in like an EQS or a Taycan? Usually in the case of those cars, it's about 1,500 pounds. So this is a 30% reduction in weight. That's one of the big points about the EQXX. It lowers the mass to make the vehicle more efficient. Then there's a couple of other ways to get energy in the vehicle. This vehicle has 117 different cells in the roof so it's a solar panel array that can drive an extra 15 miles of range now while we're talking about range a thousand kilometers in range on one charge so what is that 620 miles very ambitious but this gets back to the whole concept of this being not a china doll it actually drives according to the folks of mercedes-benz they're going to be driving this thing from germany down to the mediterranean on one charge i'll believe that when i see it then we have to get into some of the functionality of the vehicle itself. It's got an adjustable diffuser in the back. And then if you look at the overall shape of the vehicle, the most important part about that is the coefficient of drag. Now, there was an old joke back in the 80s where Volvo used to do advertisements with Volvo station wagons, and they'd say, which car is more fuel, or not fuel efficient, excuse me, coefficient of drag in terms of aerodynamics, and they'd put the Volvo next to a Porsche 928 and you were supposed to be duped to think the 928 is more efficient aerodynamically when the Volvo really was. This is a whole different kettle of fish. Most cars nowadays, they're somewhere between 0.26 and 0.29 coefficient of drag if they're efficient. Something that's unusual, it's 0.25 or 0.23. This is all the way down to 0.17. There's nothing else that comes even close. Now, while we're talking about aerodynamic efficiency, the batteries here, think about what they've got to do here with cars that have long range batteries. They've got to cool the batteries somehow. And in order to do that, they do a couple of things here. Yeah, you could have some sort of like an HVAC system that the battery will be contained in. This, they wanted to lower the mass. Remember the whole idea, this is not a 5,000 pound EV, which most are, including a Porsche Taycan. This has shutters like most efficient cars put shutters up in the front of the vehicle this has a shutter system that works in the front but it doesn't stop just in the front 
it goes underneath the entire car. So the shutter system is used to cool the battery. Now there's another aspect about this, but that we have to move to another location. Now reducing mass is not just about a smaller vehicle, smaller battery, or a lower output electric motor. It's also the materials in construction. So this is a combination of the structure of the vehicle, where the subframe of the suspension connects to the vehicle, as well as the rear mounting for the battery. So by reducing this to one piece, it reduces the overall mass of the car. So it's not just this massive single casting that looks like it's organic and simultaneously is going to spring to life that adds to the light weighting. It's also some of the structure in the front of the vehicle. So these strut domes, this is where the strut, it's anchored into the front structural piece of the vehicle. That on a traditional internal combustion engine car, like an S-Class, look at the size of this piece. I mean, it's pretty big. I could wear it as like a headdress in some third world countries. In an EQXX, or what will probably be the upcoming A-Class, this piece is less than half the size. And in terms of weight, I'd say this is all of like three pounds. Now this piece I find incredibly fascinating as a complete tech geek. This, believe it or not, is the structure that holds the wiper motor on. So think of the torque that comes from a wiper motor. So this has to be strong. Now this particular piece has been 3D printed out of aluminum. This is fine and good and all, and it's much lighter and has more structure, but here's the problem with this. This thing was 3D printed. It cannot be duplicated, say, 50,000 times on a serial production line because there's no like machine that could cast this like it would cast that. That's why castings look like this. To give you an idea, this would cost like maybe 10 bucks per casting. This you'd have to put out of a 3D printer, which frankly, think of filling that with raw aluminum and then having someone that would control it and then the cost of the printing would be just completely prohibitive to put this in a serial production car. Then there's some other innovation in the materials used. And this, I don't know if I'd call it innovation because we've seen this in other cars, where they use different types of materials that are recycled. You know, this part depends on how green you are. Like there's recycled bottles in the car. But most importantly, they use recycled bamboo in some of the structure of the interior of the vehicle, which also adds to the reduction in weight. Now, speaking of reduction in weight, we need to get back to the vehicle because there's something else that goes into the battery that does give us that lower mass. And this is where we get to the point that is way above my pay grade, and that would be chemical formulation. You see, you look at a battery, and a battery is made up of a number of different cells. And to lower the weight of the battery, you could either take out the cells, which would mean take out the range, or you could change the chemical formulation of the battery. Now this is where I had to lean on some of the engineers to understand what the hell they did here to make this battery a bit smaller. And from what I understand, it is a change of the chemical formulations, the density of the battery. It's 30% more efficient. So what they've done here is change the chemical formulation. And what they're telling me, it's more silicon or something like that. Do not hold me accountable for this. I'm just sharing with you what the smart people in the room told me. Now, there are some other weight-saving measures, like, for example, the doors, carbon fiber reinforced polymer combined with glass fiber reinforced polymer. Then think about the HVAC system in an electric vehicle. It's not a compressor that's connected to an accessory drive, connected to an internal combustion engine. Instead, it uses a heat pump. Nothing really new when you consider an electric vehicle, but what they do here is scavenge some of the heat that is coming from the movement of the vehicle to warm the vehicle itself. Now, put aside all this technology, all the science talk we had today, what does this actually mean in terms of a real world vehicle? Well, what we know is Mercedes is gonna come out with nine new electric vehicles, and we kinda know what they're gonna be because what they're doing is they're duplicating their internal combustion engine portfolio in electric cars, plus they're doing an electric van, as well as an electric people mover. What you see here, everything, if I'm being very frank with you guys, this is a very expensive car, not just because it's a technological test bed, because when you think of things like carbon fiber reinforced polymer or heat pumps that scavenge heat from a moving wheel, 
That's expensive technology. So will it end up in a future Mercedes, some of the ones we're talking about? Not the first round, but the second round, which will start with the new A-Class, which comes in 2024. So not everything we see here, that's probably too expensive to go into an entry-level Mercedes, but we are gonna see some of the ideas of that get into that vehicle, and they call that one, ironically, the MMA platform, so it's no, not mixed martial arts, rather the A-Class, so think CLA 45 or other non-AMG derivatives. Now, in terms of the design, some feedback here, this is a stunning looking vehicle. The proportions actually work pretty well, but the reality of the situation is I see this more being a CLS type vehicle rather than an A-Class. So that's just my feedback to Gordon and the team. And this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys for your input here. What are some of the technologies that in this vehicle they've showcased will actually make it to production? And keep in mind, carbon fiber and 3D printing, all that kind of stuff is incredibly expensive. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV All Word, Motoman TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I do want to share something behind the scenes. The man that is holding that camera, yes, he is German, but he is married to a New Yorker. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.